In this video, we are going to talk about what is minimalism. So before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. What is minimalism? In recent times minimalism has become a trend, even though it's a concept that has been around for centuries. It's all over mainstream media, and we've seen it used across various industries including, fashion, design, food, technology, beauty, housing, and more. We even named our company Minimalist Company Proprietary Limited. But when the hype dust clears, what does minimalism actually mean? Minimalism has traditionally been linked to pure, intentional art and design concepts. But we believe it's much more than that. We define minimalism as the process of identifying what is essential in your life and eliminating the rest. Less is more. Our modern lifestyles are far from minimalist. With so many distractions around us, we often find it difficult to create time and space to enjoy the simple things in life, like spending time with our loved ones, exercising, getting creative, cooking, or just doing nothing. We're too busy being overwhelmed by physical, digital, and mental clutter, that leads to increased anxiety and an overall sense of dissatisfaction. Minimalism is an antidote to that state of overload. So that's our stance on minimalism. But it still has me wondering, when did things get so complicated? More internet, more cars, more clothes, more drugs, more dinners, more alcohol, more television, more news, more negativity, more social media. More, is what we're up against as a society. This constant desire for more is something we call, the more virus. What impact does, the more virus, have on us? Research shows that, getting and spending, can promote unhappiness, because it takes time away from the things, that can nurture happiness, including relationships with family and friends, research shows. Quick story. I remember back in 2005 when I went to Ghana, West Africa, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Ghana is considered to be a third world country. In the town that my parents come from, there's one main street where everyone hangs out. There are limited toilets, sewerage is open, and making money is tough. But despite the struggles when you walk through the neighborhood, you are welcomed by happy, friendly people, engaging in eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball conversations, kicking soccer balls and dancing. There's laughter, banter, calmness, and unity. Now, of course, like any community, they have their struggles and desires. But considering that they have significantly less, than first world countries, I'd like to think they're doing quite well. Minimalist architecture and space. Minimalist architecture became popular in the late 1980s in London and New York, where architects and fashion designers worked together in the boutiques to achieve simplicity, using white elements, cold lighting, large space with minimum objects and furniture. Concepts and design elements. The concept of minimalist architecture is to strip everything, down to its essential quality and achieve simplicity. The idea is not completely without ornamentation, but that all parts, details, and joinery are considered, as reduced to a stage where no one can remove anything further to improve the design. The considerations for, essences, are light, form, detail of material, space, place, and human condition. Minimalist architects not only consider the physical qualities of the building, they consider the spiritual dimension and the invisible, by listening to the figure, and paying attention to details, people, space, nature, and materials. Believing this reveals the abstract quality of something that is invisible, and aids the search for the essence of those invisible qualities such, as natural light, sky, earth, and air. In addition, they, open a dialogue, with the surrounding, environment to decide the most essential materials for the construction, and create relationships between buildings and sites. In minimalist architecture, design elements strive to convey the message of simplicity. The basic geometric forms, elements without decoration, simple materials, and the repetitions of structures represent a sense of order and essential quality. The movement of natural light in buildings reveals simple and clean spaces. In the late 19th century as the arts and crafts movement became popular in Britain, People valued the attitude of, truth to materials with respect to the profound, and innate characteristics of materials. Minimalist architects humbly, listened to figure, seeking essence, and simplicity by rediscovering the valuable qualities in simple and common materials. Literary Minimalism Literary minimalism is characterized by an economy with words and a focus on surface description. 
Minimalist writers eschew adverbs and prefer allowing context to dictate meaning. Readers are expected to take an active role in creating the story, to choose sides, based on oblique hints, and innuendo, rather than react to directions from the writer. Some 1940s-era crime fiction of writers such as James M. Cain and Jim Thompson adopted a stripped-down, matter-of-fact prose style to considerable effect, some classify this prose style as minimalism. Another strand of literary minimalism arose in response to the metafiction trend of the 1960s, and early 1970s John Barth, Robert Coover, and William H. Gass. These writers were also sparse with prose, and kept a psychological distance from their subject matter. Minimalist writers, or those who are identified with, minimalism during certain periods of their writing careers, include the following, Raymond Carver, Anne Beattie, Brett Easton Ellis, Charles Bukowski, Ernest Hemingway, K.J. Stevens, Amy Hempel, Bobby Ann Mason, Tobias Wolfe, Grace Paley, Sandra Cisneros, Mary Robison, Frederick Bartholm, Richard Ford, Patrick Holland, Cormac McCarthy, and Alicia Arian. American poets such as Stephen Crane, William Carlos Williams, early Ezra Pound, Robert Creeley, Robert Grenier, and Aram Saroyan are sometimes identified with their minimalist style. The term, minimalism, is also sometimes, associated with the briefest of poetic genres, haiku, which originated in Japan, but has been domesticated in English literature by poets such, as Nick Virgilio, Raymond Rosalieb, and George Swede. The Irish writer Samuel Beckett is well known for his minimalist plays, and prose, as is the Norwegian writer John Fosse. Dimitris Lyakazes with the people from the bridge, combining elliptical monologues with a pared-down prose, narrative as a contemporary example of minimalist playwriting. In his novel The Easy Chain, Evan Dara includes a 60-page section written in the style of musical minimalism, in particular inspired by composer Steve Reich. Intending to represent the psychological state agitation of the novel's main character, the section's successive lines of text are built on repetitive and developing phrases. Minimal music. The term, minimal music, was derived around 1970 by Michael Nyman, from the concept of minimalism, which was earlier applied to the visual arts. More precisely, it was in a 1968 review in The Spectator that Nyman first used the term, to describe a 10-minute piano composition by the Danish composer Henning Christensen, along with several other unnamed pieces played by Charlotte Mormon and Nam June Paik at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London. Minimalism in film. The term usually is associated with filmmakers such as Robert Bresson, Carl Theodor Dreyer, and Yasujiro Ozu. Their films typically tell a simple story with straightforward camera usage and minimal use of score. Paul Schrader named their kind of cinema, transcendental cinema. Abbas Kiarostami and Elia Suleiman are also considered creators of minimalistic films. Joshua Fields Milburn, Ryan Nicodemus, and Matt Diavella directed and produced a movie called Minimalism, a documentary that showcased the idea of minimal living in the modern world. Software and UI Design In software and user interface design, minimalism describes the usage of fewer design elements, flat design, fewer options and features, and tendentially less occupied screen space. Minimalism in Science Communication to portray global warming to non-scientists, in 2018 British climate scientist Ed Hawkins developed warming stripes graphics that are deliberately devoid of scientific or technical indicia. Hawkins explained that, our visual system will do the interpretation of the stripes without us even thinking about it. Warming stripe graphics resemble color field paintings in stripping out all distractions and using only color to convey meaning. Color field pioneer artist Barnett Newman said he was creating images whose reality is self-evident, an ethos that Hawkins is said to have applied to the problem of climate change, and leading one commentator to remark that the graphics are fit for the Museum of Modern Art or the Getty. What do you think of our video? What do you know about minimalism? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.